Line is meant for an adult audience. Loveline may contain sexually oriented content. Listener discretion is advised. Now, here's Loveline with Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. Uh, that is my favorite show opening because uh, Engineer Mike has something choreographed like a chunky Raiderette he's moving around in that booth. <laughs> Looking good. And I meant chunky for a Raiderette, not for a player. You certainly could play nose tackle. 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. 1-800-568-3191. The fax number 310-854-4455. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. He's a board-certified physician and addiction medicine specialist. Thank Hello, you. doctor. I'll put my swizzle stick down Yes, tonight. put yeah. your slobber spatula yeah. down, the thing you flung your diseased saliva on me with last night. Very dangerous. Tonight, we have a guest. He's roaming in the halls. He's not feeling well. He's cranky. To tell you the truth, he's been here all day, but he's going to come in in just a few minutes. He's Stan Lee. Now, if you don't know the name Stan Lee, you should, because he is the legendary creator of Spider-Man. The Hulk, Silver Surfer, the X-Men, and other drug-induced, uh, all right, well, I don't want to say, we'll, we'll get into that when we talk to Stan, but Stan has made an incredible living. He's basically, Mar he is Marvel Comics. He is the guy. Right. Told me he got there in, in the late 30s. I heard him tell you, you that. you can believe that. Yeah. Actually, amazing. 39. And has been there, I guess, he's, is he still there? Well, we're going to find out. Drew, you ever, you ever read any comic books? No. No, me neither. Ever won? No. Me neither. Mm -hmm. I think there's something wrong with people that do. Probably. Is that I, just I, I me? I watched The Hulk, though. I like that TV show. Oh, I love the TV show. I was always waiting for Bill Bixby's pants to come off, but they never did. They just got shorter and a little tattered at the bottom. <laughs> and he'd go from town to town. He'd get a new job each week. Find a new chick. It was kind of like uh, The Fugitive. Right. A, a, a million TV shows based on that, on the run, looking for the guy who did something to them. Right. New job each week. Right. New, new relationship, new job. It's got to be frustrating, actually, if you're unemployed watching the Hulk. This guy picks up a new job, and they're good jobs. He's not sweeping they're, up they're crap. Career, they're careers. Oh, he's like a veterinarian yeah. one week. He's an, he's an airplane pilot the next week. He's working at a cancer research lab the following week. Very versatile. We'll miss Bill Bixby quite a yes, bit. Yes, yes. Yes, all right. So should we get to the phones? Let's go. Or do we want to turn to a Bill Bixby tribute show? No. Okay. Sheila? Yeah. You're on Loveline. Hi. Hi. Um, my problem is uh, actually pretty in depth. It's pretty hard to talk about. Um, Do your best, Sheila. Well, I am married, and I've been married for uh, eight years. Mm -hmm. And uh, recently, I met a friend, a neighbor, actually of mine, and uh, we started becoming really close friends. And it is a female. Mm -hmm. And um, the subject was broached upon about. Um, her and I becoming lovers, and it was kind of joked about for a while, and well... But by the we, two of you? Uh, by the two of us and by other people, and both of us did speak with our husbands about it and asked them how they would feel if we were to do anything, and they both said they were okay with uh, it. What? Are you, you sure they weren't talking about borrowing some lawn furniture or something and there was some confusion? No, no, I'm totally serious. <laughs> Okay. They said that they were okay with it, that they didn't see a problem with it. Oh, come on. And, um, well, now there is. <laughs> the, you've done something. Well, yes, we have done something. And um, And you've, you've told your respective spouses about it? Yes. Now, yeah. who, whose home field was it on? Um, mine, I believe. <laughs> was it at your house? Yes. Okay, that would fit the home field analogy. Okay, and... Um, <laughs> Where was your husband? At work. Mm-hmm. At work. And her husband? They were, they were both at work. Okay. So how have they... Re it wasn't something that we wanted to do in front of them or with them or... All right. So what, what has happened now? What's the deal? Well, uh, my... Actually, uh, the girl is on the other line with me. All right. Okay. So can, we, can we speak with her as well? Hi. All right, what's your name? Peggy. Peggy? Yeah. All right, Peggy. Now, how's your husband reacting? Because we know Sheila's husband's not uh, taking well, too well. My husband hasn't been fine with this. Yeah, ever. Oh, no, he was fine with it to begin with. He said he didn't care. 
and that he could. You know, I th- I, I think it, that you know? those react. Listen, ladies, that reaction has got to be symptomatic of what sort of drive you guys to pursue extramarital relationships. Well, it did, it, whatever, whatever the sex of the person you choose is, your husbands are like completely out of touch with you. You go in and say, you know, I'm going to go kill somebody, and they or whatever, and he's like, oh, That's fine, fine, no nice. problem, no problem. Uh, yeah. Could you get me a beer yeah. on your way back? I mean, it's not until you actually engage in these behaviors, and suddenly, when their ego is involved with it, and their lifestyle is threatened, and their whole, their whole, you know, the, the, what they think of. Exactly the yeah, but I mean, what, what, it's no, it's no wonder you guys were pursuing refuge in, in a in a real connected relationship. I mean, it doesn't sound like you guys have had a relationship with your husband. Maybe, maybe this woke them up to something. Maybe this will turn out okay for you guys. I mean, you guys, are you guys, the two of you aren't in love, are you? We are. Yes. Very much oh, you life. are. Yeah. Oh. And you want to leave your husbands? We don't want to. Oh. We but. But if that's what it comes down to, then that's what's going to happen. Well, all right. Now, how's it manifesting itself? What are they saying? What are the husbands saying? First of all, her husband pretty much flipped out one day, really freaked out. Yeah. And kind of did some damage to the apartment. And, um, and you know, their problems stem from before us, too. And, I mean, we've come to the realization that evidently, Something was wrong in both of our marriages. Right. Well, that's what Drew was alluding to. That's what I'm telling you. Okay. We, we, we've realized that, in, but we've also, we also know that there's something with our marriage that both of us don't want to give up. Okay? Right. But what I, I can't, my husband can't honestly expect to tell me that it's okay to do this, and now I have feelings for this person, and then to turn around and say, okay, you have to choose either me or her. Is that what he's saying? In a sense, yes. One minute he says he's going to accept and he's going to try, and then another minute he turns around. And well, says, what do you want him to accept? I mean, wh- what I'm are you asking, asking him to accept? I'm asking him to accept our relationship now that it has become one. Mm-hmm. Right, but that's kind of a tall order, isn't it? Right, I mean, it, but it, I'm also asking him that if he can't accept it, to make whatever choices he has to make. All right, but, but listen, is this Sheila? Yeah. Sheila... You're putting him in kind of a tough position. You know, I mean, you have to decide who is more important, Peggy or your husband, and who you'd rather be with, and you have to go with that person. You have to make the decision. Having him make a decision, which is uh, basically either leave or take a back seat to me and Peggy twice a week, is, is a real awkward position to put a guy in. But not only that, I mean, yeah, it's, there's no doubt he'll leave that kind of circumstance. But you got to remember, you have a commitment with this man. And if, if you have any kids or anything like that, yeah, we have I mean, come on, come on. You know, stay with what's important. Stay with what you value. I understand that your feelings are not being cared for properly and that you have great needs that are being left unmet. I, I understand that. But for crying out loud, do we, do, does everybody have to keep one eye on the exit door when you have kids, you have a family, you have commitment, and you just, you're going you're gonna to fly through that door at the first opportunity? I'm no, sorry this has happened. It's not the first opportunity, first opportunity, opportunity for it's, either one no, of us. No, it's not. I told you, I've been married for eight years. We've I've gone been married through, for five. We've gone through hell and high water between the two of us, okay? And now it, the problem started way before Peggy and I ever... Right. Well, we've established that. I'm just saying that it's time to really work on healing that. That that su- pursuing another relationship to try to fix that is not going to help it. And that if you value your children, if you value your family, if you have value in the commitments you make to a marriage, live up to those and work hard at them. And I know it might not be the most pleasant alternative, but I just the way I feel about this. If your husband were a physically abusive or a psychopath or something, okay. But well, I, I haven't heard if that. they didn't have kids and uh, if they didn't have kids, I'd say do what you want. But yeah. the kids sort of tip the scales in staying with the husband, even though these guys don't sound like. No, uh, of course they don't. But they but they need any to gifts. But certainly this can be used as leverage, perhaps to get them into. All right. Well, get them all right. Let, let's cleanse our minds of this. Now, Stan Lee's your Stan. Ever had a lesbian experience, by the way? <laughs> Afraid not, Adam. Really? Because <laughs> that can be a good thing for a guy. How the hell can a guy have a lesbian experience? I don't know. I'm here to ask the hard-hitting questions, though, Stan. I see I'm going to learn a lot on this show. Oh, you certainly are. Now, Stan, you're here. Let, let's not beat around the bush. you got a show coming on tomorrow night, Generation X. Yeah, and everybody better watch it, let me tell you. It's on Fox 
It'll be at 8 o'clock at night, probably the greatest show of all, and because uh, I do talk in superlatives and hyperbole and everything. Well, it's, it's a, a good show. You're a legend. You can and, say whatever you want about yourself. Yeah, and the fella needs the ratings. Come on, guys, watch it, huh? Now, <laughs> is tomorrow, um, tomorrow's, is the, tomorrow the pilot, or tomorrow, what do they call that? Is that the pilot? Yeah, well, this is a movie for television. Right, and, and then, if it does very well, they may, it may go to series, right. which I'm sure it will, because it will do well. And this is Generation X is about a bunch of uh, 20-year-old pot-smoking slackers? Is that, <laughs> they're is not, that, do they're I understand not necessarily that right? 20 years. No, they're a bunch of mutants. Anybody who knows the X-Men series, you know, uh, they're, they're, it deals with mutants. Best-selling comics in the world. Because we deal with mutants, too. Well, I think you guys are mutants. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, mutants are my favorite people. And the deal is, is there's how, how many different characters in it? Well, let's see. There's the villain. That's Matt Frewer, who plays Trash. Now, he's the guy, if you remember um, Max Hedrum. Right. He was Max Hedrum. Okay, the legendary Max and, Hedrum. I mean, need I say more? No, all right. So it's a star-studded cast. Oh, it you is. You got the guy who played is. Max Hedrum in there. <laughs> Come on, this is going to hey, series. Hey, and then we have Finola Hughes, who was oh, in General Hospital. We were just talking about Finola yeah, on my the right God. End. I mean, everybody talks about Finola. She's, and it, it was shot up in Vancouver. And most of the other cast, the Canadian, they're from Vancouver, and they're really great. They play these uh, mutants, and and I don't want to tell you too much about it. All right, it. but a lot, a lot of special effects. Uh, oh, sure, sure. You know, if it's a Marvel thing, it has to have special effects. Right. Okay. Now you, we were talking before, just about twenty minutes ago, and I was confused. I didn't know if you'd actually, you know, you created Spider-Man, you created uh, X-Men, you created Silver Surfer, but but these were just your ideas, essentially. Right? I mean, you didn't actually draw them. You did the storylines and the writing. Me, you're making me sound so inconsequential. <laughs> I certainly <laughs> am. No, I worked with artists, and we would discuss these things together, and then I would write them, and the artists would draw them. There's a fellow named Jack Kirby, one of the great artists of our time, and he did a lot of them, and Steve Ditko, who did Spider-Man with me, and on and on. Now, did, you had a picture in your mind of what Spider-Man looked like. No, to be very honest, I didn't really... I would describe the power that Spider-Man had and what kind of a person he was. And then the artist, Steve Ditko, he made a lot of different sketches. We looked at them together, and at some point we said, hey, that one looks the most like Spider-Man. But I didn't really have that vision until I saw Steve draw the pictures. All right, I have a new superhero I'd like you to look into. It's, it's loosely based on my life. It's a guy who naps, masturbates, and blames his parents for everything. Is there something you could do with that? Listen, I, I hate to destroy what could be a wonderful idea, <laughs> and I don't want to give you a complex or anything. And uh, I have a feeling if you were to take it to one of our competitors, because I like to play fair, uh -huh. and I think it's time we give one of, the, give one of them a First a good idea like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why should we monopolize all of them? Yeah, we'll call it uh, a Loafer Boy or something, <laughs> a Hamper Man or something. And I know I'm going to regret in years to oh, come. Oh, it's going to come back and bite you in the ass. Regret. It'll <laughs> haunt me. There's no doubt about it. It'll be a series. Oh, yeah. All right, Stan, we're going to go back to the phones. And we're going to get some bizarre calls, and you're going to help us answer these calls. You're all in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Taylor. I got two questions. Yes. The first question is, I was wondering if acid shows up on a urine test. Not typically. Okay. No, there, as I understand, there are some available. They're not part of the routine screens these days. Okay, like the ones they do in hospitals? Uh, it depends on the hospital. It depends what they're looking for. Well, where does acid well, you people can. know when you're on acid. That's it, how it, acid it shows just, up. It's pre present in such tiny quantities that it's very difficult to detect. I heard that the only way they could do it was a spinal tap. That's one way, but I think there are, there are my understanding is that there are more commercially available urine tests available. Yeah, and, and when you're looking for a job, like at Taco Bell or something, they may do drug testing, but they probably won't go that far as to give you a spinal tap, well, but that's a little involved. That, that and... You know, unless somebody's having a toxic reaction, acid is not something people are typically screening for because it doesn't cause addiction. All right. Okay? What? People that do acid often are addicts, but it doesn't, acid is not. Taylor, you have a second addiction. question? Yes. My second question is, I've heard that, like, if you drink vinegar or pickle juice, it gets pot out of your urine. Oh, Taylor. Taylor. Taylor, you're smoking pot every day, aren't you? <laughs> Dropping acid, smoking pot. Right? No. Most days? I quit a lot because I got called, but... Yeah, but, you know, if let me, let me ask you my acid test question. The first time you really got high smoking pot, do you remember that time? Mm, yeah. Not, not the first time you used it, because sometimes it takes a few 
exposures to sort of prime the pump. But the first time you really got high, do you remember that? Yeah. What was that like? What did you think of pot the first time you got? Mm, I thought it was great. Great. Uh huh. You can eat even more superlative sometimes. Mm, yeah. Put the bong down, Stan. We're trying to do a show. And, he, he, and, and Taylor, I, I could, I would predict that you have a parent or grandparent with alcoholism. Mm, yeah. Okay. And see that that is a recipe. I mean, you're describing marijuana addiction. People with a family history of alcoholism who have a superlative experience the first time they really get high on pot. Most addicts will say, I loved it and continue to love it. And you will pursue it. I'm, I'm sure you did pursue it from that day forth. And now you're only stopping when you get caught. You're beginning to accumulate losses. You're going to screw up your job. You're going to screw up school. You need, you need to take care of this. It, it, is, it is a subset of people with a biological predisposition for alcoholism that get this. Oh, and uh, let, let's talk about acid for just one second now, Stan. You come up with a lot of real far-out ideas, you know? A lot of these cartoon ideas seem real bizarre. Like like the guy who did Gumby. Do you know that guy's name? I can't recall his name, but I no, heard... I know this a character. I don't know. I heard guy. he did some acid, and that sort of <laughs> loosened up his mind just enough to come up with, like, Pokey and the Triangle Heads or something. <laughs> do you know how square I am? You didn't I know what that. acid is, but when you say do acid... I have no idea. Does that mean drink it, smell it, inject? I don't even know. Oh, what come do on. Don't play it. stupid with that stand. I swear you know. to God. Good. So you, I you, feel so out of the loop right now. You came up with all these ideas uh -huh. totally sober. Yeah, yeah, wow. completely. And yeah. Uh, are you, are you getting rich off of this stuff? No, getting, not really. Why not? Only in friendship. Only in fun. Only in <laughs> only in meeting guys like you and learning all about the other side of life. Oh, uh, the dark side, yeah. Stan. Yes, <laughs> welcome to it. By I the think way. I'll get ten more comic books out of all this. <laughs> now, now you were working for what was well, what would become Marvel Comics. That's right. Later on, at the time, what was the original name? I originally was called Timely Comics when I went to work there. And you went there in the real late thirties. Yep. And you laid out these ideas. Uh huh. And they took these ideas. Now, because you were working for them, is it, do they have the rights to those? Yeah. Yeah. So, so you got pay paid as an employee. That's right. But you're not getting the big fat residual chunks. I oh, mean, hey, I'll, what a, I'm not complaining. They treat me well. I've got a great job and all that. But no, I don't own the characters. They're owned by the company, by Marvel, which is fine. I mean, that's the way it goes. Right, and are you still employed by Marvel? Oh, yeah. I, I hope so. After my performance here tonight, I may go back tomorrow and find out I'm not. They're putting but a I, pink slip on your mailbox <laughs> right now, Stan. Yeah, but as of uh, this afternoon, I think I was working for Marvel. Now, let me ask you an honest uh -huh. question. Let's, sure, say you an honest have, let's say you have a tremendous idea, something right. you just know is up there with, with Spider-Man. For instance, uh -huh. like the guy who naps, masturbates, and blames his parents. Let's say you have an idea. It's like a epiphany. You, you want to produce this yourself, don't you? You don't want to go into Marvel and have them get their big claws all over it and take their cut, do you? I mean, can yeah, but you if ever they, produce if, stuff if, yourself? If they do it, it makes the company stronger, and it makes my job more secure, and I'll get a bonus probably, and uh, I have no problem with that. All right, so you're a team player. Yeah, I'm one of these few people left on Earth, I think, that's a company man. Wow. All right, we're going to take another quick call. Gus? Yeah. You're on with Dr. Drew and Stan Lee. Hi. Hey. Oh, man, I got a problem. Okay. See, I fell in love with this girl over Christmas when I was on vacation. And uh, her boyfriend at the time, he was on vacation, too, so he wasn't around. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had been together for about a year and a half. And uh, she kind of cheated on with me. I, mean, you know, I didn't have sex with her or anything like that. But, uh, you know, they broke up when, she got, when you know, her boyfriend got back. And then, uh... Wait a minute. You guys broke up when her boyfriend got back? No, her and her present boyfriend broke up. See, I wasn't going out with her at the time. Okay, no, wait a minute. She had one boyfriend out of town. Drew, are you... Drew, pay attention. I, I don't get it. <laughs> All right, she has one boyfriend who's out of town. Yeah. She has another boyfriend that's in town. Yeah. And then there's you. No, okay. He is the in-town boyfriend. Uh, her boyfriend was, was out of town. Right. And I just came into town. And so, like... I was just kind of, you know... Fooled around with her. Yeah. You didn't consummate the relationship. Right. And so when he got back, they broke up. And then I came back to, uh, you know, I went back home after vacation and everything. And, uh, you know, I wrote her letters and called her and everything like that because we live pretty far away. And, uh, and then she started going back out with him. And then she said it was just because she needed somebody there because, you know, she's feeling real lonely and everything like that. Right, and she didn't want her bed to lift off the floor, so right. she had to weight it down. Uh, 
<laughs> so. Yeah, all right. Gus, come on. Stan Lee's sick and he's tired. He's, 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 he's got one foot in the grave over here. You better hurry up. No, I'm fascinated right. oh, by fascinated? it. I can't imagine how this is going to end, what the problem is. It may, it may not end. <laughs> it's going to end in a commercial if you don't hurry, Gus. What the hell is he saying? <laughs> that was God. All right, so... Then uh, they started going back out with each other, and she said even though that uh, they were going out, that she didn't want to lose touch with me. And then, you know, they went out for about a week, and then she called me, and she said she'd lost her virginity to him. Right. And so she called me a couple days ago, and she said that um, she didn't want me to call her a writer anymore because she said it would hurt him too much. Yeah. And so I guess... What all right. All right. Stan, I got an idea for you. <laughs> no, I can't make a comic I got out a, of no, this. It's called I'd like Confused to. Adolescent. <laughs> it's called, it's a guy, all right, he was an auctioneer, and he got fired. And he's a teenage <laughs> auctioneer, and now he had some sort of brain trauma. He was dropped as a child. He became an auctioneer. He got fired from, from his auctioneer job, and now he just r calls radio stations and r rambles aimlessly. Do you think you could do something with that, Stan? You thought that was aimless. You should read some of the scripts that are submitted to us. But you cut him off at the best part. He said that if he, got, if he called her her boyfriend, it would, it would offend the boyfriend. And right. that kind of I found very interesting. Yeah. We're going to be back <laughs> with Drew, me, You guys Stan. do this all the time. Oh, you, yes. you listen to this You're great doing it stuff. Too. We're going to lock the door. I tell you, no wonder you don't want to go home. We'll be back with all more right. Spider-Man after this. Meanwhile, halfway across the city, in a small fish market in Chinatown. Excuse me, could I get some fish? In the meantime, Love Line will be right back. Catches thieves just like flies. Look out! Here comes the Spider Man. Is he strong? Listen, bub. He's got radioactive blood. Can he swing from the thread? All right, all right, all right. Oh, I love that song. One Who of the great that? classics of our time. Boom, boom. Got the whole <laughs> horn sec Now it's some freak with a Casio. Sitting at home in his one-bedroom apartment in Van Nuys, cranking out some sort of high-tech BS. <laughs> I miss that. I mean, that that sounded like you you had like a forty-piece orchestra in on that thing. <laughs> it was one guy with a <laughs> Casio. A lot of noise. <laughs> <laughs> don't screw with me, Stan. No, uh, no, I don't know. <laughs> Do you have any part of uh, of, of the mean, music? No, no. I'm tone deaf anyway. I. When I went to school as a kid, they had something called the listener's row. If you couldn't carry a tune, you had to sit in that row. Oh, right. I sat there all through school, and I was threatened with instant expulsion if I sang one note while the class was singing. <laughs> I could throw the whole class off key. Well, Stan, <laughs> when I was uh, in junior high in PE, I was in the donkey squad. <laughs> that was for the guys who had the boxer shorts hanging out of the gym shorts who couldn't uh, tie their shoes correctly and... Uh, Thank you, Mike. That voice was, uh, well, that was a donkey brain. But before that, that was legendary uh, comic book creator Stan Lee. I'm Adam Carolla. I'm not legendary at anything. And there is Dr. Drew over here. Let me give the phone numbers out, 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Fax numbers, 310-854-4455. And Stan, uh, so Stan was upset that we cut that last caller off. Oh, yeah. When he started out by saying, I've got a real problem. I mean, my heart just went out. To but him. his problem is he was scatterbrained. <laughs> well, his problem is also that he doesn't want to see the reality that, that his, the relationship is over and his girlfriend is with her boyfriend and she's trying to get rid of him any way she can. And, and all the while, just keeping him strung along b before she actually committed to her present boyfriend, keeping him just there sort of in case, well, we in her get, pocket. We get these calls every night where the a guy or a girl and, just and doesn't want to accept the reality. This is not exclusive to any one gender. No. Either gender can be is is equally uh, capable of being screwed over and lying to themselves. It goes back to the stuff we were talking about last night, or particularly insofar as it affects women. They all they're see seeking intimacy, and they will tend to compromise themselves in order to attain that. It is 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 low esteem the key element in this? Uh, yeah, it's it's what makes people perhaps pursue it with uh, more gusto. Yeah, with more pathology. You know, they do it when they shouldn't and 
pursue it, you know, compulsively because they they feel so bad. It's the only way they can validate themselves. Stan, you married man? Yeah. Been married for a lot of years, or no, do you have more, one of those trophy more wives? Than forty, about forty-eight years. About forty-eight. Yeah, we're years. We're going to stay with it until we get it right. <laughs> <laughs> now you, uh, oh geez, I, I'm not going to do the math. What year did you guys <laughs> get married? I think forty-seven. Yeah, but you don't say I think when you're talking to your wife, do you? you say forty-seven. Uh, yeah, no, neither of us have any memories at all about dates. <laughs> <laughs> so, could you imagine? And and you're still in love. Oh, she's great. I mean, she's the greatest woman in the world. Yeah. And and you met her when you were... Well, you know, you asked if I drew before. <clears throat> I didn't draw comic strips, but I used to draw cartoons just for myself. <clears throat> Excuse me, I got a bad cold. And um, when you draw, usually you draw. You love to draw girls' faces. And there was one face I always drew, my idea of the idolized pretty girl. Mm -hmm. When I met my wife, she had this face that I was drawing as a cartoon all my life. I couldn't believe it. Oh, you didn't just put paper on her face and no, then sketch around it. <laughs> so I wouldn't let her get away. <laughs> wow, so you'd created this image, and then you'd actually seen the female manifestation yeah, of it. it was really incredible. In fact, I almost feel I created her. <laughs> okay. Could you draw me up a date for this weekend, Stan? If you think <laughs> I'll see what I can do. <laughs> All right, let's take a question for All Stan. Right. Matt. Yeah. Do you have a question for the legendary Stan Lee? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, uh, do you feel that uh, when Jack Kirby died that that changed Marvel and all? Well, I don't know that it changed Marvel, but it certainly was a loss for the entire comic book industry. Jack was one of the absolute all-time greats. And... Um, it, it changed everything for everybody, because we'll never have any more of his artwork around, and, and that's a tragedy. Now, he drew all those... He drew everyone, right? Well, not everyone, but he drew a great deal of them. He drew... Um, let's see, he worked with me on the Fantastic Four, the Mighty Thor, Sergeant Fury, the Avengers, the X-Men. Um, all that. Uh, there might have been another one, I, I, but those were the big ones. Oh, is that it, Matt? Yeah, no, well, I got a comment. <clears throat> the, that, uh... Marvel Action Hour, what were you thinking? <laughs> you mean when I did the um, introductions or for the show itself? I, I hung up on him because I didn't like the cut of his jib, Stan. I thought he took a <laughs> jab at you there. Well, the Mar no, no, that, I can take it. And the Marvel Action Hour, when it first started in syndication, it wasn't the greatest animated show in the world. But we now have a new team doing it, and I think it's a lot better. You had guys like Stick Figure Man. Oh, you, you were in there, were you? <laughs> Son of a gun. I got a fax for you here, Stan. What the heck is going on with Wolverine? Any new cool plans for him? Yeah, but I'm not going to divulge them in front of everybody. Uh, some of our competitors may be listening, and they'll try to beat us to it. You know, we always have new cool plans at Marvel. And the newest, coolest thing, and I'm so glad you let me segue into this, of course, is tomorrow night at 8 o'clock oh, when yes. you're going to have a chance to watch Generation X on TV on Channel 5. And, oh, are you going to thank me for it? Wait, no, Man, that, I no, thought you were sick. <laughs> I'm well, never no, too he, sick for he, that. He comes to life when he's plugging his project, though, doesn't he? No, having a cold isn't sick. It just makes my voice he's even worse than it is. He's hacking a lung up when it comes to help and love line, but I, when he's plugging his own gig, he has no problem. Wait, I'm trying to remember. I think it's called, yes, it's called Generation X, and let me think. Yes, I think the network is Fox. It's the Fox, Fox network. Is it 8 o'clock? That's a good guess. Across eight the country? or, or just I believe so. I, I believe so. And it's tomorrow night, Tuesday night. All right, so watch that. Now I can go home. <laughs> no. <laughs> because you said it four times, you have to stay 15 minutes for every time you said Generation X. We're going to go back to the phones. Drew, you got one you like? Uh, yeah, this one. Okay. Robert? Hey, what's up, dude? Hey, dude, you're on Loveline. Adam? Yes? What's up? Hey. hey. What's up, Dr. Drew? Hey, Robert. Hey, Stan. Hey. What's up? Oh, very little right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's an older guy. <laughs> right, I'm going to make this quick as possible. All right, Doc. Um, yeah. On the 8th, I had surgery on my back for L4-5. Or, yeah, L4-5. Mm -hmm. Since then, I've been on Percocet, Vicodin, mm, ES, yeah. Motrin, 800 millimeter, milliliter. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're on it. Yeah, oh, yeah, dude. Check it out. You, you'll definitely know. What else you take besides opiates? Uh, Valium, 10 millimeter. What else? And then there's like... Three uh, muscle relaxer things. What else? I have no idea what. <laughs> what else? What else you taking? But okay, I'm a daily pot smoker. What else? I, I smoke me. Okay, I, well, anyway, 
<laughs> what, were you at one time a heavy alcohol user too? Um, at one time, but right. Only Using else besides anything else besides pot? Yes, speed. Right. Okay. That that about rounds it out. Yeah, pretty much. That's about it. You then know. you're 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 a real. It, actually, Robert, I'm sorry, but it's a typical case. It is, is a it real, real typical case. And really, uh, to be like this guy's like a medicine cabinet. Yeah, but it it is <laughs> it it ultimately is going to be the the story of opiate dependency. Really. And <laughs> unless you clean up. Two things are gonna are gonna happen. One is you're gonna have real trouble getting your back to heal, right? Because uh, the speed, particularly in the marijuana. You do, know what? When I do speed, it it kills the pain. What, what's up with that? Speed has opiate type properties, and there may be people out there that disagree with me on this, but I I have seen people using heavy speeds, like you know grams and grams a day. Uh -huh who will have the same withdrawal syndrome that people get from heroin. Plus, you can re-injure your back when, you, when you're being cuffed and pushed into the back of the squad well, car. Oh, here's yeah. the real problem. The, the real problem here is that, that all these drugs tend to reinforce the reward centers in your brain in such a way as to perpetuate pain. Okay. There's sort of a pain reward cycle that opens up, and no, nobody fully understands it. But unless you clean up, you're going to have chronic back pain. It's Hard to clean up. I'm sure, yeah. Robert. Th therein is you, you, uh, that's where I feel for you because you're right. It is hard, but and if you uh, really want to do it, there, there's a lot of treatment out there for okay, you. Okay. Um, I also got one quick question. Um, methadone. What? No, I, I would see. I am. No, no, no. I'm just. I'm just saying this. A friend of mine. Yeah, I'm, I get stuff from sometimes. Um, I might do some. What does meth? What would methadone do to someone who's never done heroin or anything like that? Methadone will just replace your Percocet. It's a longer-acting oral opiate. The the horrible thing about methadone is it takes up to two months to withdraw from it. It's like having a two-month heroin withdrawal. I am not a fan of methadone. There are circumstances where it must be used, and I understand that, but I'm not a fan of methadone. God, the guy was like Keith Richards. Dave. Hello. You're on Love Line with Stan Lee. Hi, how's it going? Happy Chinese New Year's to everyone. That's right, it is. Today. Thank you. Yes, it's the year of the rat. <laughs> hey, that was good thinking. For Christ's sake, couldn't they get something cute? Something like a panda bear or something? A rat! <laughs> it's the year of the rat! That was fine planning by the Chinese folks. <laughs> okay, my question is, I like my girlfriend to uh, suck my anus. Oh, yes. And uh, I was wondering if there are any adverse effects for me or her. <laughs> Stan, so I've just way, left. <laughs> Stan's on the 405 right now. <laughs> you want to know if there's any adverse effects for her? I for her. <coughs> wait a minute. She wants you to do that to her. No, no, she does it to me. Oh, she does it. All right. And I want to know if there are any adverse effects for me or her. All right, for you, nothing. You're king of Anusville. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the adverse effects for her could just be self-esteem problems later on in life. And when she eventually gets married and gets drunk and divulges to her new husband what she used to do to y uh, you, maybe even like a, like, a, like, a, like a red butt from where he smacks her. I don't know. Drew, it matters. Uh, Drew's, Drew's hung his head in shame. He doesn't want to be part of the show. Well, let me explain about this uh, region. No, no, wait. I will talk. If, if, if you're gonna if you're gonna just go off on it, I will talk. Whenever I put the lab coat uh, no, no. on, Drew comes no, no. back to I, life. I will talk. I will talk. Um, Dave. Yeah. I, I don't even know, even know how to address questions like this, except that there is obvious potential for exchange of body fluid. Any sexually transmitted disease that happens to be present, certainly you could contact. Uh, there are what we call oral fecal transmitted diseases of various types in this country, and they're not very common but certainly uh, she would be at risk for those. Uh, Stan, I just came with another one. Heine Man, a guy who's fixated with people's rectums. I think you've just put our entire company out of business. <laughs> we'll be back with more Loveline after this. Loveline will be right back. And if you're not here, we'll hunt you down and shoot you in the head. Just kidding. Hey, this is Pat Boone. You and I are listening to Love Line with Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. I did like Pat Boone. And I want to thank Mike for putting that 
drop in after that lovely call we had before commercials. Just it's going to equalize things out. Reminded me that we did have Pat Boone here, and he was okay with this. Pat Boone, the great equalizer. And the story I enjoyed most about Pat Boone's visit is when he said he had to kick a little ass out on his driveway one day when some crazed uh, Debbie Boone fan showed up one right. day. I just asked him if he ever kicked any ass, just just as sort of a joke question. But as it turned out. <laughs> Even Pat's got to roll up the sleeves of the bad golf jacket every once in a while and stomp a little booty. Let me get the phone number out, 1-800-LOVE-191, 1-800-568-3191. Fax number, 310-854-4455. Stan Lee has left the building, but his legend lives on.